So apparently I have very, very bad time management skills because I spent all day doing this. Not my face, I mean the lighting and stuff. And then I was like, it's the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I don't have a video for tomorrow. Right, let's find some fun RTA matches. So, it's harder than you'd think to find fun RTA matches since everyone's using like the same five comps over and over and over and over and over and over again. But we're gonna see some interesting things today. I'm gonna sort through a lot of these different matches and I'm gonna find some interesting things for you guys. One of which that we're gonna see today is the Light M Bison. So if you guys are not familiar with the Light M Bison, you guys might be familiar with the Fire One. First skill, Provoke. Second skill is Absorb Attack Age. Third skill is a, this is, th those are the same as the Fire One. Leader skill is not the same. Uh, third skill uh, absorbs HP of all allies, so decreases their HP, basically sucks their HP out. Fantastic. Uh, afterwards, increase the attack bar of all allies, 40% each, increase the attack power and speed for two turns. So like a Kali, but instead of giving herself invincibility, sucking up the HP from the rest of your team, which is exactly what everyone wants from an LD5. Uh, but anyway, let's see some fun stuff. So this is interesting. He first picks Kaki. I think he might be first picking Kaki just in case he goes up against the Bruiser comp. He wants like a ragdoll and he wants to switch up his uh, strategy. He goes, who is first picking uh, Chibu and Asima? Because I feel like if that, well, I guess they fir first pick that into, uh, into the Kaki. But I feel like I, anytime I try to cleave, everyone's got the perfect counter to me. And I'm like, I wish they well, actually, Chiwu Asima is still pretty strong. So it just comes in with the big nuke. He got res he resisted though. That's that's really the uh, that's the, really the reason that he even won this is just Light Bison was on Will Runes. He resisted. He comes in boost attack bar and uh, and that's GG. That's hashtag esports guys. That's the real reason that this match uh, played out like it did. Next match, first picks Bastet and Kaki. I'm not sure why those were specifically the well probably the most common picks. Uh, bans out the Gianna, so they still have a speed lead. They have a speed lead and a swift uh, unit on both sides. So just happens to outspeed since they have a 33 speed lead. I'm not entirely sure why the opponent switched the, up the strategy to Bruiser. I feel like it would have been a better, uh, s again, it's just me, is my opinion. Uh, but I feel like the better strategy would have been to just stick with the try to outspeed uh, instead of picking the Tyrannus Mo Long. I mean... There, that's like a bruiser like then you would have had to pick like a chroma and molly and tried to and or ragdoll or something like that like why not just pick another like another speed lead and say it's some more fast aggressive stuff uh or maybe even like a vertiheel or so yeah the vertiheel still could have uh still like a, a triple revenge or a double revenge will vertiheel still could have countered uh, and, and cut in at least so I wonder why they went for just like tanky tanky instead of uh, some more aggressive or counter mechanics. Next match opponent starts picking speed. He's p I, I wish people would pick this stuff against me. I really wish they would pick. Why can't I ever find anyone that picks this against me? Every time I fight anyone, they're like, I have the perfect counter to you. And I'm like, wonderful. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. He comes in here, and they're like, no, that's fine, I'll let you cleave me. I'm like, what? I'm doing something wrong, guys. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Okay, so he gets the provoke on there. Uh, resist. That Kaki's still gonna do just fine, I feel. Kaki's still gonna do, he's got the blade slaughter, and that's, uh, GG. Oh, that's not GG. It's close to GG. I love this comp. We took a look at this before in, like, the last, or the one before that, uh... Epic Battles of Arte, the brand, yeah, the brand, yeah, just one shot it. Oh my god. And she does extra damage if the uh, if the opponent doesn't get CC'd. So let's see how much damage this, I mean, we know that this is from the last video. If you guys seen the last video, we know that that's super fast units on this. Super. Brandy's got 111 base speed. And then that's super fast. Uh, Katarina is also very fast as well. Uh, and then that, uh, that Horus Kabezanuf is super fast, super fast, like super, super fast, right? So then they have the, uh, the Lich leader. They have the two 24, uh, leader skills. So that whole team is just, like, ridiculous fast. Whole team. So now what is he gonna do? Oh, he's, he's got the, uh, reset on the Kaki. And that's enough. That just finishes it off there. I love this. I love this team, though. But, I mean, this guy's farming the crap out of Giants, though. But I really, I, I really like his, uh, I really like his strategy. We have to see some more because I just love this comp. So it comes at the same, the same exact five picks. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Uh, everything's super fast. Uh, bans the speed lead. Makes sense. He doesn't want to get outspeed by that, uh, outspeed? Outsped by that, um, Fire Art Master. So, absolutely obliterates the Fire Art Master. Ignore defense, ignore defense, ignore defense. Bring Savannah down to, uh, dismounted form. I always say human form. It's dismounted form. And then, uh, nukes down the Water Art Master. I love this comp. I, cause it's different. I love different comps. So what is he going to do when uh, Brandia takes a turn? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to try to stun Brandia. Okay, so he's just going to take... He's not going to let Brandia take a turn. He's going to just take infinite turns. And, uh, yeah. Well, he, I mean, he goes for the Brandia, but there's... As soon as Brandia moves, there's not much he can do. She's going to do that. She's going to... Well, actually, he didn't even land that. He didn't land... I assume that the Brandia, with all that damage that he's trying to put on that, does not have it... Mm, that's... That's... That's dead. Um, does not have a ton of accuracy, right? So, uh, if you're trying to get that fast of a Brandy, I mean, she's got good base speed, but if you're trying to get that fast of a Brandy, plus that much crit rate, plus that much crit damage, uh, something you gotta sacrifice somewhere, right? So she probably doesn't have too high, uh, HP and defense and accuracy and resistance, um, because of that. Guys, what you're about to witness is, I have, I don't even have any words for it. I mean, you can see the screen right now. The guys first picked Orochi. First pick Orochi, second pick Dark Anubis, Tessarion, and Water uh, Hearn, the Water Dryad. So, um, I, I have no words. I don't think that his opponent was prepared to fight this comp in RTA today. I don't even know if he was prepared to be using this comp in RTA. He did get a little bit lucky cutting in the Diana there, uh, so he didn't die uh, with the Orochi. Does some damage with the Deadly Wrath. How much? And does everything die? Not, well, uh, obviously everything wasn't going to die there. But I thought he might have taken down the Juno with it. He got the Diana down. He got the uh, Juno down halfway and also has Oblivion. So she's not going to cleanse that stuff. Tessarion's going to do a lot of work here. Okay, so two, uh, two continuous damage on there. Goes for that last one and the Oblivion on there. Does some damage against the Juno. Just completely took her out. So, Tree of Loss, Oblivion. And that's game. Yeah, I'm, I'm legitimately speechless. I think that this was fantastic. I cannot even believe that this person won with this. But this person won with this. And two Oblivion units, though. Two, two Oblivion units against the uh, Diana, Juno, and Kinky. Smart. I don't know what the Orochi thing <laughs> was. Um, so that was a little bit interesting. But yeah, uh, good job. This guy again, same guy, does not first pick Orochi. First picks some more meta stuff. Goes in with a lot more water. So water, water, water. Wait, the opponent picked two fire units, so. Uh, and then opponent only picks one wind unit. Even going into all water. All water, he's like, nah, I just I just need one uh, wind unit. The wind unit gets banned out, obviously. Uh, let's see how it does. Does a lot of damage to that water demon. Uh, water demon is actually pretty, uh, pretty good against some turn cycle heavy teams. So, let's see if they don't have enough damage to, like, kill very, very fast. Uh, where he has the potential. Because, I mean, he, if he never revives, he never revives. He's still got seven, t uh, seven turns, six turns now, left on this uh, revive. So, Chow comes back from the, uh, from the scroll. Three turns left for this revive. He's going to pop back up with very low HP. Uh, he actually got cut by the Molong. Pop back up with very low HP. Ignores defense. He's going to go down very fast again. All he has to do is skill two. And then two units are down on that side. So if he wins before the 12 turns for the demon, then... Well, and, the, and then also the scroll too. So he has to he has to kill Molong and then also kill Chao before the eight turns left. They did decrease the turns on that... Uh, they gave him a, a shield, but they did decrease, I believe, the, the turns on that water demon. Because I think it was longer than that. Now he's going to pop right back up, and he's going to kill the uh, Emperor. Yep. Oh, he does not. He does not do it. Right, because he could one-shot that. He can't quite one-shot the, uh, the, uh, the Moor. So. This is going to be, this is going to be a situation, because he's got to have to proc the passive, and then kill after, and that, well, I mean, that, that'll, that'll also do it. But, uh, yeah, you don't usually see people winning in G1 with full water teams. This match, the player on the right-hand side, I'm curious to see how this goes, because they have so much turn cycling. Just turn cycling and strips and attack age decrease and more attack age decrease and more attack age boost on their team. Uh, so much turn cycling. One of the 
nice things against a comp that does so much turn cycling with not really too much damage. You do have the additional damage in the artifacts nowadays, uh, so it's doing more damage than it would have back previously. But for things like this, uh, Fire Lich is strong. Dark, uh, you don't really see too much of the Dark Horus, but the Dark Horus is actually pretty decent against teams like this, where they keep cycling turns, and he's just going to keep naturally getting attack age, attack age, attack age every time they get turns, so... Or at least in theory, the Dark Horus is good against things like this. And then super fast on Despair. By the way, I see a lot of you guys ruining the Dark Horus very slow. You're like, yeah, because we have not very fast runes. Okay, aside from that, if you do have runes fast enough, yes, he steals turns. Like, he steals uh, attack age. He's not quite like the Fire Lich, though. Fire Lich is just going to instantly give himself uh, turns. The, the Dark Horus actually needs to... Uh, needs to, like he's gonna boost his attack age a little bit a little bit he needs to have good speed to begin with so you have to make that uh that dark horse pretty fast so this guy actually came in and he got some i mean he, he's using a lot of units with passives but if we see here similar to like i said the dark horse and the um uh, the fire fire lich um those units have passives to give themselves extra turns this was they they brought in the uh the Water Art Master passive, who has a passive. They brought in the uh, Chroma, who has a passive. So passives are generally strong against these fast control 9 million turn uh, type teams. They almost actually won Stylish X, but uh, there was just too much too much rune quality, too much artifact quality on the, on the, uh, the other team. This next one, clearly super try hard mode, just goes all whatever. Let's just pick a bunch of occult girls. I mean, if you like using a unit, may as well use all of them. I suppose. Why just three? Why not five? Uh, Diana gets banned. Three cult girls, very heal Diana. Uh, gets resisted. He's got the strip on there. Gets the strip. Does he get the defense break? No, he does not get the defense break. That would have been, I'm sure, a much different situation. Well, I mean, of course, it'd be much, she, she would be dead. That would, that would be the situation uh, if she got the defense break. So comes in with the... Uh, but he can't do anything. He's got all these... He's got the Annabelle with the AoE defense breaks. Then he's got the uh, the Charlotte and the Rika with the CC. But he can't really do anything against all that immunity, right? So he's got, actually, uh, extra turns. Very beneficial. Big shocker. It's Summoner's War. Extra turns are really nice. Uh, he goes for... He does not get the stun on the Oki, which was... Got to sleep on the Oki, though. But he at least killed the... Uh, he at least dismounted the, um, the Barbara there. Does enough damage. I can't, I, I can't believe this is working. Okay, so kills the Barbara, and then they just concede at that point. They're like, you know what? This is not gonna, not gonna work after this. I triple cult girl, G three team. You know, if if I try triple cult girls, I you know what? Let's try triple cult girls. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this. Clearly, this is an amazing team, so uh, I want to see this for myself. Guys, guess who it is? It is first pick Orochi. Uh, he's first pick in Vanessa Tyrannis this time, though. Vanessa Tyrannis, Harmonia, Fanaka. Fanaka. Uh, into opponent picks two single target uh, burst damage dealers. Uh, and, they, and he uh, also picks a water monkey. Okay, so uh, Fanaka, if you guys don't know what Fan He's picking Fanaka Tyrannis. He's G1. This stuff gets hard Shungpunged this season. That's why you really don't see too much of this stuff. Shungpung, uh, Oki, uh, I mean, even the Fire Succubus. Not too many people using the Fire Succubus, but even Fire Succubus, uh, Dark Pixie. Like, there's all this stuff that, uh, like, anything that cooldown resets. Um, Rocky, there's just so much stuff that's, uh, like, th this, this uh, Vanessa, Tyrannus, Triana kind of thing just is not as strong as it used to be, right? So, comes in with the Fanaka. Fanaka, when he gets attacked, he does his uh, skill 2 AoE Provoke. When he gets attacked, he will increase the cooldowns of the enemy. So, uh, so everyone's got, like, their cooldowns. Uh, not completely reset, but just uh, increased a little bit. Can't believe he's taken Vanessa Tyrannis, Harmonia Fanaka, and he, and he's, I, resisted, AoE resisted. That's, that's, that's like what my monkey does. That's why I had to put my monkey on despair. I'm like, you know what? You're going to get resisted. I'm going to get extra chance for you to not disappoint me. He still disappoints me just fine. Uh, quite a, quite a decent about, but, uh, I actually like these monkeys on despair. I know I'm the only one, but I like these. I like the water monkey on despair. I like the, uh, the light monkey on despair just so they have less opportunities to disappoint me. 
But I mean, when do we even see, like, this guy's got to be the only person that has picked Fanaka this season above Conqueror level. Maybe I'm making some assumptions there. Maybe some of you are like, no, Bega, I'm C2. I'm picking Fanaka every match. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, one of the very, very few people that are actually picking Fanaka. And then there's just a lot of turn cycling, turn cycling, turn cycling. Uh, let's see what he can... Can he make anything happen with this Fanaka? It's CCs against, like, infinite turns with no cooldowns. Well, the Fanaka's gonna, gonna be the only thing cooling turns down. T cooling... doing cooldowns. So now I think that's, uh, I think that's GG. I mean, at this point, the monkey's just... Anytime monkey gets turns, monkey's just gonna be able to do enough damage. So... Yeah, it should be, uh, should be good. Oh, nothing does he actually get, doesn't get any stuns. Try to spare, I'm just saying, try to spare. Monkey, he will disappoint you less. He's like, no, I'm not. I would rather have an Orochi than a despair monkey bagel. Terrible idea, despair monkey. I mean, violent monkey's good. Violent monkey's pretty much the standard, but uh, I like to think outside the bun. Fair warning, there's gonna be a lot of LD5s in this match. So, first picks, uh, Molong Harmonia Diana. And then he picks two LD5s. So, uh, opponent picks uh, some LD5s, and then the Light chun -Li, which basically may as well be an LD5. Doesn't have a speed uh, buff, but doesn't really need one. So, does not wind up killing everything. So, that is the difference between winning and losing right there. If that would have killed the, uh, the, the, I was going to say the fever. Not the FIFA show. Lydia. If that would have killed the Lydia, I have one. I can't remember the name apparently for whatever reason. Um, if that would have killed the Diana of the Lydia, that game would have gone completely the other way around. So this is an important lesson right here that I want you guys to take something away from this. Is rune quality and every little bit of grinding, gemming, making sure you get the most efficiency possible because RTA is all about that's why you see the same units being used over and over and over again because some units could be almost just as good as the units high up in the tier list it's just that little extra bit of defense that little extra bit of speed that little extra bit of uh these units get uh, stronger with additional damage with artifacts like those little things that make units more meta and then they will get picked constantly versus a unit that's just a little bit not as good that gets picked like almost never because efficiency because it's just more efficient and you have a slightly higher win rate with the units on the higher up on the tier list and everyone's just trying to get that little edge as much as possible just these little min max things of just these extra efficiency here extra efficiency there um and that's why a lot of you are like oh the matches are boring we just see the same units over and over and over again because that's what high level players do they try to get every little bit of efficiency uh, as possible in every way that they possibly can so this is another situation where every bit of efficiency mattered the rune grinding the gemming the artifacts maybe reduce damage uh reduce crit damage received reduce damage from probably not reduce damage from light you don't see too many people stacking specifically reduce damage from light unless it's like a last fix situation where they're like i'm specifically taking this in against a sema or light uh chun -Li. i really don't ever see specifically reduce damage from light uh for specific things um but just as an example like this is where efficiency really matters but anyway uh that's it for that's your lesson for today runes guys runes <laughs> runes are important you're like bagel shut up seven years Seven years you tell me runes are important. I know. I got it at this point. I'm still not going to farm them. I like to buy premium packs. All right, guys. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you as always in the next one.